Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you that we are drafted into your vine. That you nourish us by your Holy Spirit. That we may bear fruit in this world to share with others your grace, your love, and your mercy. Always let our eyes be open to see your hand at work about us. Ears be open to hear your word and hearts open to receive and embrace it. And Holy Spirit, move upon us that we may be changed for your glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. morning. It is wonderful to see you in the house of the Lord today where we truly do worship our Lord and Savior, the risen King Jesus. And he is so happy that you're here today. And we are glad that you're here with us to celebrate who he is. Today, our gospel is about abiding in a vine. Now, I don't know about you. But I love to see vineyards. Have you ever seen a vineyard out there? Or you see a grape trellis? I remember when I was young, there was these grape trellises and they had all different kinds of grapes that would grow on them. And in the middle of winter, they were nothing but spindly, you know, branches that were there and you wonder, is there anything good about this? And then as spring comes along, you see the leaves opening up and coming upon that that branch and then all of a sudden there's these little small clusters of grapes that start growing and then they get bigger and bigger I remember going to one of the clusters early in the season and I wanted to see what it was like so I took this little grape off of there and I bit into it. It was one of the most sour things I've ever tasted. <laughs> it's like, oh, why? But as the summer progressed, these grapes became richer and more nutri- with nutrient. And they grew bigger and more succulent. And then when you go pick one off, it was wonderful. Concord grapes are the best because you can sit there and squeeze them and just kind of suck all the juice out of the middle of them. But those are the things that we need to think about because without being nourished, without being fed, how do we grow in Christ? Without being nourished and without being grafted in the vine, how do we grow in Christ? How do we how are our lives transformed? How are our lives changed if we're not grafted into the vine and feeding off of him? We used to raise tomatoes when we were up north. We don't ever try to really do it down here. But we had a beautiful tomato garden. And one of the things that we knew is that as that tomato plant starts growing, it gets these little suckling branches off of it. And so you clip off of those and then those other branches are able to produce bigger and better fruit. Well, that's like us. When we really get into God's Word, when we really are within fellowship with other people, we're being fed by God. We're being fed by His Holy Spirit. We're being fed by each other. We're growing in Christ. And we, we are grafted into that vine. We are grafted and He nourishes us through the power of His Holy Spirit into becoming more like Him. And to be able to go into the world and share what God is doing in our lives. And what He's done in our lives. And how He may have transformed us or how He may have led us to this or some other way. But we can see God's power in our lives. But we have to be aware of it. We can't be like one of those little suckling branches that just is hanging out there and not producing fruit because that's that's not what God has called us to do. In Scripture, in the Old Testament, we read about God bringing Israel out of Egypt, planting a vine, a vineyard. Anything that's related to a vineyard is about Israel. It's about what God wanted them to do. And He wanted them to bring all nations, all nations to fully know Him, all nations to come to Him, all nations to worship Him. Why? Because He is the God of creation. He's not a God of wrath. He's a God of love as we read in 1 John. He's one who comes out and expresses His love to you and me no matter what we've done, where we've been or how we've done it. If we've done wrong, He's the one who receives us back and forgives us. But He's also the one who feeds us. And that's where we get fed. We get fed through His Word. We get fed through through fellowship. We get fed through studying His Word. 
And if we're not doing that, we're not being nurtured. We're not being nutrient. We don't get the nutrient. In Colossians, it reminds us that unless we are rooted in Christ, we will not be fed. Think about plants. When I was in my teens, we had this big garden. You know, we were living in New Mexico, and my dad was really an agronomist by nature. And we always had these big gardens. And we always had cherry tomatoes. I mean, we would have, this is when they still had um, paper bags. You know what they were? <laughs> the old paper grocery bags that are about like this. And about. Our neighbors got tired of us. Because we would bring bagfuls of cherry tomatoes over to them. And it's like, we don't need any more, thank you. <laughs> but we fed the garden. It had nutrient in it. And that's like us. That's like us. Now, plants start out small. But the roots start growing deeper and deeper so that they can get into that nutrient and bear fruit. Our reading from Acts today with Philip. Philip had been with Jesus for how long? Y'all can answer this question. How about three years? Is that okay? Y'all can say three years, right? Okay. He's been with Jesus for three years. He's learned from Jesus. He understands at this point, because Jesus has been resurrected, they've been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit was leading him somewhere, and he runs across this eunuch who actually was in the court of this queen, and he'd been to worship and honor worship in Jerusalem. And he was on his way back home, but he was reading the Scriptures and he didn't understand it. How many of y'all read the Scriptures and really understood them the very first time that you read them? I didn't think so, neither did I. But Philip was an evangelist because he heard and he knew that this person needed to understand what was happening. And while he could read it, Philip shared with him and opened his eyes to who he was reading about the Messiah, who Jesus is. And his heart was touched. And he says, well, what's preventing me from being baptized right now? You see, this is the power that we have. This is the power that we're given when we feed on God's Word, when we feed on who He is, when we feed on what He does in our lives and in the lives of others because He will open our eyes to see it. But if we're not being fed, if we're not studying, if we're not being involved then we will not be fed. And I'll hear people say, well, I'm not being fed. Well, that's because you're not involved in the body of Christ. Be involved, because that's what it's about. Being rooted in Christ and gaining everything that you can so that you can go out. It's not about me, but it's about Him. And about sharing about God's love. How many of you ever experienced God's love? I'm glad to see hands go up. If you haven't, then open your heart. I mean, really open it up. And allow God to really touch you. Because He will carry you through everything that you're going through. But there's something more. When we're fed, we want to share. When we're fed, we want to be rooted. When we're fed, we want to grow deeper. When we're fed, we get hungry. I'm... Now, some of you might be vegans out there, so don't take this. But if I have a nice, good steak, it's going to be hard to put half of that away in the refrigerator because I am going to chow down on that steak. The point is is that when we're being fed something that we love and enjoy, we want more of it. We want to taste more of it. And when that happens, we want to share it. We want to share what God's doing in our lives. We want to share His power. We want to share His grace. We want to share with others. We want to be more rooted with Him. In Ephesians, Paul says this. He says, So that Christ may dwell in your hearts. May dwell in your hearts through faith. They dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints 
What is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness not just partially filled but with the fullness of God with the fullness of God and when we do this we are called to go and we're called to share just as Philip shared with the eunuch we're called to share with others what God is doing and he goes on to say in Colossians in the third chapter he says and whatever you do in word and deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him You see, this is where our strength comes from. This is where our nutrient comes from. It comes from believing and from calling upon Him. Paul reminds us that when we are in Christ, we die with Christ. And he goes on to say, but in Galatians, he says, I no longer, it, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. And notice it says, Jesus said, I am the vine. Abide in me and I abide in you. Not on you, but in you. In other words, His Holy Spirit resides within our hearts. And resides within us. How many of y'all ever trimmed a bush? How many of y'all have had somebody cut your grass and not picked it up? It dies, doesn't it? How many of y'all been up north when the leaves fall? They get really nasty, don't they? I mean, they're, they're just dead. They go... But you see, that's what happens when we're not in Christ. And we're not serving Him. And we're not doing what He's called us to do. Christ calls us to be in Him. But when we're in Him, we're able to go forward, just as Philip did. We're able to serve, doing everything that we can for Christ. Everything we can so that others may know who He is. We're able to go to Him in prayer so we know exactly where He wants us to be. Because without prayer, it is hard for us to know what Christ wants us to do. Without prayer and being in that relationship with Him and abiding in Him, how will we ever know what He wants us to do? We'll be glad to do things we want to do, but are we going to do things He wants us to do? Prayer and service, and through that service, evangelism. I want to share with you the words of Martin Luther. Martin Luther was the one who left the Catholic Church and helped start Protestantism. But Martin Luther back in 1542 wrote this. He says, For God will be working in all things through you. Did you get that? God will be working in all things through you. When we abide in the vine, He works in us. He will be with you milking the cows. Now, we go to the dairy counter, I know. But he says, He will be with you milking the cows. And he will be performing the most menial duties through you. And all duties, from the greater to the least. In other words, God is going to be with us wherever we are, how we're doing. But as long as we're serving him, and others will see it. And then Martin Luther closed by saying this. And will be pleasing to him. It will be pleasing to him when we serve him. Abiding in Christ means we are abiding in the vine, being nourished by Him, by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we abide in Christ, others see us. And no matter what we do, He'll be there with us. Today, we are bringing two more that are being admitted into the daughters of the King. There's three things that the daughters of the king are part of who they are. And those three, three things are prayer, service, and evangelism. They have a prayer life that goes to God and lifts us, me, you, and the church up in prayer. 
But the prayer is also about how can we serve and what can we do for you, Lord. It's not about us, but about you. And when we do that, it's evangelism because we can be out there and share what God is doing. So the question today is, are you really abiding in Christ? Are you abiding in getting fed by Jesus that you might be that succulent grape cluster that somebody comes to? Somebody sees that and wants to be a part of that vine. Somebody sees that and wants to know who Jesus is. Because when we have that, we have life abundantly through Him. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are my branches. Will you abide in Him? And allow Him to abide in you. Amen. She is a licensed lay Eucharistic visitor. She will be going to visit Anna, who is in the hospital or actually in rehab right now. And she will share with her the message that she heard today. She will share with Anna our prayers for her, that she's being lifted up by prayers. And she will share with Anna how much we truly miss her. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Kay, for this ministry that she is called to, for the service that she's called to. Father, we ask that you would be with her and Anna and everyone else who may be there. Because you said we're two or three are gathered together, that you are in their midst. So be with Anna, be with Kay. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our last communion song was, I am the God that healeth thee. There are many things in our hearts that might need to be healed. But God heals people through our service, through our prayers, and through our sharing His Word with others. As you go forth today, I hope you're reminded that Jesus grafts us into His vine. That we are in the vine, not on the vine. But we are grafted in so that we may share what God is doing. We may be filled with what God is doing. We may be nurtured. We may be rooted with Him. That others may have hope. And I leave you again with this portion out of the Daughters of the King Manual. Prayer without works is empty words. Prayer without work is empty words. We need to pray and ask God what He wants us to do. And service without prayer is lost labor because we'd be doing it on our own and not on Him. And Jesus said, abide in me because you can't do anything without me. So I would ask you to open your hearts. Allow Jesus to nourish you. Allow Jesus to be your source of sustenance. And that you would be fed by Him and in the fellowship of His body. And when we are, we can go forth into the world in peace. We can go forth with good courage. We can hold fast that which is good. We can also render no one evil for evil for with the Lord. For those that are faint-hearted, we can strengthen them. For those who are weak, we can help support them. For those who are afflicted, we can strengthen them and help them. And we can honor all persons in this world. And we can do this because we love and serve the Lord and we are empowered by His Holy Spirit to go forth into His name. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our going forth hymn is one that the daughters of the King is their hymn. It's one that they carry forward. Let us stand and sing. Lift high the cross.